an engineer said, I need this to work now, and he ran a copper wire uh, from the leg of this to the leg of this, I think that's a cap or a resistor or something. The most uncomfortable part of the process, but it's okay, there's not a room of people watching. That was pretty easy, actually, okay. Okay, just do it. Okay, <laughs> he says just do it, all right. Let's just do it. All right, okay. teamwork. Oh. I found another one that was lost. We'll put that over there in case they need it later. <laughs> Ta -ta, you go. <laughs> I don't think the screws that come in the thermal pads are included in the final model, but. This is a dual GPU video card, which is immediately interesting to me because I think the last dual GPU video cards I worked on, if I'm even remembering the names right, were like maybe the 295X2 and the GTX 690. I think that's how far back we're going since the last time I took one of these apart. And that's what we're doing today. So this is a Maxon model of Intel's new Arc Pro series GPUs. It's a B60, they're calling it the B60 Dual. It's got 48 gigabytes of memory, so suck it, NVIDIA. And then in the system here, these are Sparkle models, but you can see they've got four of them butted together, uh, and they're doing some kind of AI stuff. Now, uh, I came to this meeting and I said, AI stuff, I don't know anything about that. I am very out of place. But then they said I can take this apart, and now things are okay. So we're going to go do that. Touch Infinite 看一些影片，看一看今天的天气等等。如果你想了解更多资讯，可以点击下面说明栏的链接，回到正片了。So this is the card. This is a blower cooler card. Uh, part of the reasoning for that is because if these are going in boxes with lots and lots of GPUs, then this is one of the few use cases where blowers really make sense. So with axial, you're always going to get better cooling. The challenge with axials, as soon as you start stacking them a couple millimeters apart, you just can't get the air into the back fans. And so going blower or squirrel cage does actually make sense for these. Now, the reason I actually really wanted to look at this is because it's dual GPU. So we literally just learned about the B60 and the B50 Intel cards. I don't know a whole lot about them yet, but one of the things I do know is that they are PCIe uh, Gen 5 by 8. This card, however, is basically running a 2 by 8. So there's some kind of bifurcation going on where they're able to access both the GPUs. And we can actually see where they are already because we've got the four screws for the uh, retention for the heatsink, and then there's two of them, obviously. Uh, one of the things I'm curious about is going to be if the memory is dual-sided or single. So we'll figure that out when we open it up. But otherwise, something that Maxon was telling me is that for the display out, so the top two go to one of the GPUs, the bottom two go to the other GPU. I think it's GPU 1, GPU 2. Uh, and then for DP, they support UHBR20 on both. Um, and then otherwise, we're going to look at the PCB, which should obviously be a custom PCB, and the VRM as we get inside the, uh, the cooler. So let's start pulling it apart. I think I'm going to start with just, well, they've, there's several screws that are already missing, so this will be easy. Uh, we'll start with the heat sink screws. And I'm just going to do all these halfway each. Price I do not have yet. My understanding is that the only number I have is that this is supposed to be below $1,000 US. Uh, I, I do not know what the final is going to be. And then that's with both GPUs. So that's, that's obviously going to be different than a single GPU model. Uh, the die um, should be G21. So it's familiar in that way. And then the VRM I'm expecting to find is a 6 plus 2 plus 2 layout. So that would be six for core, and this is for each GPU, and then two SA, two VRAM. Now each, in a single configuration, each of these would be 24 gigabytes of memory. We've got one captive screw in there. So backside, there is memory immediately. Uh, so they've got, oh, where's the uh, maximum people? Hey guys, I found, uh, you lost a screw. I found it. It's Vitaly, you wanna swing back? Uh, so there is a, it's okay, it's, it's, it's pre-production. 
，再再一个。So anyway, uh, so there's a there's a I don't think the screws that come in the thermal pads are included in the final model, but uh, someone in the factory lost that. Anyway, the the rest of the card. So we've got some thermal pads that are uh, connected to the the memory modules. Let's see if we got all of them here. It looks like this is about a maybe 1.5 or 2 millimeter thermal pad. It's the more kind of clay type that you see on cards. I'm going to just pull this so it doesn't get damaged further, and we'll preserve that over here. Let's see. So backside got some caps that might I don't know if that's a debug header or something. Uh, memory modules, and then now we really just need to open the actual PCB. Should be another three screws in here, and then that will take the PCIe. Played off, so pretty standard. This is important, actually. Um, so, on the PCIe bracket, they have these large punched-out holes right in the back, which is good. I mean, that's what it needs to be because this is a blower style. Uh, so this is the only place the air comes out. It's not coming out the top and bottom like you typically see. That needs to be unobstructed, which it is. And I'm going to try and pull this. This is always the the most uncomfortable part of the process, but. It's okay. There's not a room of people watching. Let's see. That was pretty easy, actually. Okay. That's cool. It has been a long time since I've seen dual GPU cards. All right. So uh, looks like we have the the two. I'm assuming copper cold plates. Do we have information on? Is this the base plate aluminum or copper? Copper. Okay. All right. So final. So this is pre-production. So final is going to be vapor, a VC uh, on the for the cold plate here. So it'll end up being a little bit different looking. So it's going to be a vapor chamber, which has some more depth to it. It's, it's crimped at the end, uh, and then there's heat pipes running through it right now. This is apparently going to be a copper for the final material. Um, so what they're doing is there's some channels punched out for the inductors. That's going to be the inductor line. That's the MOSFETs. Uh, there's memory on both sides, so we're seeing that here from the separate, the discrete pads from memory. More inductors for the other side of the VRM, more MOSFETs for the other side of the VRM, and so it is running two uh, VRMs for 2G. I mean, it's, it is effectively, as you would expect for anyone who's seen this in the past, but it's two discrete GPUs just sharing one PCB. So the PCB ends up being unique in that way. Uh, for power, they're going with a single 12 volt, I'm assuming 2 by 6 or high power, but uh, and some of the other cards here are running eight pins. So um, the board is supposed to be somewhere around a total board power of about 400 watts, give or take a little bit under full load. The heat sink, we were told earlier, should be able to dissipate just about 400 watts. I, I don't have a ton of, I obviously don't have any thermal data yet, so maybe we'll test it if we get one. I'm not sure that'd be really the only thing I'd confidently be able to do with it other than acoustics. Uh, but looking at the rest of this, so I'm gonna pull this out. It looks like there's a couple screws scattered around here near the memory modules, and then otherwise we'll shift our focus back to the PCB after I get the shroud off if I can. So these I'm assuming are just going into either the fan or the shroud. Those definitely go into the shroud. Okay, a couple more over here. Uh, and then for later in the show, we are actually taking apart another one of these cards, uh, but it's going to be a single GPU model, so it'll look a lot different. Oh. oh. I found another one that was lost. We'll put that over there in case they need it later. <laughs> I want to be clear, that was... that. Uh, that was not me. That was already there. In fact, if you look at the, I mean, that, that thermal pad material, that's been in there for a while. So, all right. We're missing something somewhere. I don't know if we can pull it out. Do you have someone who's assembled it before? Before I start yanking on things? Okay. Just do it. Okay. <laughs> he says, just do it. All right. Let's just do it. Vitaly, this might be a two person effort. All right, use it to hold that. Almost. Okay, yeah. almost. All right, okay. teamwork. We got some team assist in here. 
Uh, so this is what the inside of it looks like. This is a pretty standard blower heatsink. This is an aluminum fin stack. Um, very typical fin density that we see for these. But the top of this is an L-shaped fin, which is intentional. That's to channel all the air straight through. It's not. It's it's maintaining the pressure through. Uh, what's a relatively large heat sink. So pressure ends up being a big problem with blower coolers. Blowers are the solution to that. Uh, and then closing it off to force all the air straight through is, is uh, what ends up getting the job done. So there's our, power ca or our fan cable. That connects over here on the PCB. There's actually two headers for it. We're only using one. And then internally for the shroud, just typical shaping. So this is an, an aluminum shroud uh, scooped at the inside to project the air through. And otherwise, there's really nothing special with this particular piece. It is an aluminum shroud, um, and, and that's about all that you'd expect. At most, you could maybe add some more uh, pads somewhere to sink heat to the to the metal, but then, then there's a skin temperature issue sometimes. All right, so internally, I guess the PCB is the only thing we haven't spent a ton of time on. Um, my understanding, and I have not verified this, is that this is a 6 plus 2 plus 2 per GPU, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Looks like core phases there. There should be two SA and two uh, VRAM scattered around here somewhere. And then we've got another one, two, three, four, five, six for this GPU. Um, there's a couple blanks. So I mean, they, they could add more to the VRAM if they wanted to. It looks like there's, there's room to do that. So there's one more spot for a phase. Yo, chita da tusa da Here. We have two with driver for the BB uh, point, yeah. so it can support the UHV R20. Okay, so that's you're getting that from these redrivers. Yes. Okay, cool. So then two two redri uh, redrivers here for the UHV R20 support, uh, and beyond that, the only other thing I'm seeing that's special is this bypass cable. So there's a uh, a copper wire here that's soldered to the end of this MLCC. I think that's that is cap going to, what is it going to? That's for the fan speed detect. <laughs> it's for the fan speed. <laughs> Engineering sample. It's a fan speed detection. That's cool. I respect that. All right. So an engineer said, I need this to work now. And he ran a copper wire uh, from the leg of this to the leg of this. I think that's a cap or a resistor or something. Uh, now I need to see if there's any other uh, Easter eggs. I think that's pretty much it. Cool. So yeah, the coolest thing with this, like I was saying, is just the fact that it is a dual GPU uh, card. So this is, it's, it's an AI market thing. We don't do AI market stuff too much. We talk about it. We've actually got some tests for a, a separate video coming up. So we're, we're doing a little more, but um, mechanically, this was interesting to me. I'd love to see this in consumer again. I don't know that it's coming back. The drivers are too much of a problem for gaming. But uh, anyway, very, very fun to see. We're looking forward to opening more of these throughout the show. Intel says, and this should prove, that it is allowing its uh, partners more customization and, and freedom. Um, well, they didn't say more. I'm, I'm saying more than competitors from what we've seen. So um, we want to see more of that. NVIDIA has really clamped down on it over the years. It's sad. Uh, so hopefully Intel can kind of keep that openness for the partners because this kind of stuff is just cool to see. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. For more information on this, I'm sure Wendell will have some on the AI side because he was here with me and you can check out his stuff on level one text. But otherwise, go to store.gamersnexus.net to support us directly or patreon.com slash gamersnexus to uh, help us there and check out more on this stuff in the future. We'll see you all next time.